making a bechamel sauce, you have to start off by making a roux. You have to, for the equipment you'll need, uh, sauteurs or a thick bottom saucepan, wooden spoon and obviously the hob. So you're going to melt the butter in the pan. You'll see there that we've cut it down into smaller cubes. This helps the melt faster. Helps the butter to melt faster. Okay, I don't, I don't want the butter to stick in the pan, so I'm moving it around every now and again so it doesn't stick, and I wouldn't want it to burn either. Moving it around again, so as you can see, the butter's really starting to melt now. There's only a little bit left, um, and it's starting to form a bit of foam on the top of the pan. <coughs> so, what I'm going to do now is add the flour, I'm going to mix that in. And really make sure I'm scraping the bottom of the pan, making sure none of the butter or the flour is sticking to the pan. I'm going to keep it moving, and for this particular sauce, we're making a blonde roux. Okay, so you're only cooking it out on the uh, on in the stove for 30 to 40 seconds once it's all been mixed together as you can see I'm scraping off all the flour all the good stuff making sure it's mixed in with the roux so cooking that out and when that's cooked what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly start to add a little bit of warm milk, a little bit of a time, a bit of warm milk, mixing it in, making sure there's no lumps, making sure that the roux has taken all of the mixture or all of the sauce on board uh, to make sure that we're getting a good consistency throughout the sauce. If you don't put in the milk a little bit at a time, mixing it with the flour and the roux, you end up with a lumpy sauce and it's a lot more hard work to get the lumps out of it other if you don't do it slowly or bit by bit so as you can see in goes the milk <coughs> mixing it round okay, and what you'll notice is that the flour and the roux will soak up the liquid okay, and the colour of the roux will change colour as well um, and we'll see the consistency slowly getting a bit bigger in the pan <coughs> and it's time to add some more milk okay. in between each ad adding of the milk I'm bringing it to the boil or letting it get hot. So now you can just, as you watch the video, you'll see me slowly adding milk and making the sauce. As you, as you can see it's getting thicker now um, so obviously it's going to take a little bit more time to work in the mixture but keep working it around the pan keep stirring it, making sure that you're pressing the lumps out because you don't want lumpy sauce Best amount of a nice smooth consistency which should coat the back of a spoon when it's ready obviously as you add more milk to the pan the more milk you add, the longer it takes to come up to the boil. And obviously, as you can see, I'm not I've not stopped working the roux and the milk in the pan. Continually stirring at all times.
always mixing the sauce. Always making sure there's no lumps. As I said previously, if the milk's not hot, the sauce will get lumpy quicker. It takes longer to make the sauce. So as you can see now, I've left that on the stove to heat up that little bit, last bit of milk, um, as it was cold um, before mixing it all into the sauce. And then obviously adding more liquid to make it into a nice smooth bechamel sauce. See, it's coming to the boil now, so in a second I'll start mixing it around again to make sure that the roux takes on board the remainder of the milk that's in the pan before adding any more to the pan. Now the reason why we're using the thick bottom pan is it distributes the heat more, there's more even cooking. Okay again, making sure you're really giving it a good mix round, beating out all those lumps. Okay, you can now see the difference between the two. We're almost there now with the bechamel. Getting a little bit more milk. Mixing it in. Making sure we're scraping the bottom of the pan. Again, you don't want it to catch, so you've always got to make sure that you're lifting off the ingredients off the bottom of the pan. And we've almost got a finished bechamel sauce. In some cases when you make bechamel sauce, when you've got the sauce to this stage, you would put a studded in it onion into the sauce and let it simmer for 20 minutes. <coughs> so it infuses more of the flavours. In this particular instance we're not going to do that. Um, we'll be making this into a Mornay sauce or a cheese sauce um, afterwards and we were going to use it in a lasagna. So therefore in this instance we've not used the studded onion. Um, but what we will do is we're going to put it to one side in a little bit um, and keep it warm before use. Okay, quite a lot of liquid now. It's almost the right consistency. Obviously it needs to come to the boil because I'm going to need to check that it's the right consistency once it's boiled. And I can't tell that if it's cold. Okay, my sauce is now, looks like it's coating the back of the spoon. It's a nice, smooth sauce, no lumps in it. Okay, all that good stuff. Well, obviously, if I was going to put it to one side um, and keep it warm, I'd need to put it into a bain-marie. But I would also need to cover it 
and we cover it with what's called a cartouche. And the cartouche stops a skin forming on the bechamel source. Okay, making the cartouche, take a sheet of greaseproof paper, fold it in half. Turn it round so it's like a book, and then you're going to fold it in half again. I always make sure that the centre of the fold is on my right hand, which makes a point for my triangle. I then form a triangle as that point being my tip, fold it again. fold it again to make the basis of the cartouche. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to measure it by putting the point to the centre of the pan. And that's just measuring to make sure that the cartouche is going to fit in the pan too small and it won't do anything to the source, it'll still get skin around the edge. So then I'll tear off the excess greaseproof paper. which will give me a cartouche, perfect circle of paper. Okay, and before I put that on my sauce, I'm going to do one more thing. And that is, I'm going to butter one side of it, or royal one side of it, so that obviously it helps with the not sticking to the sauce. Because it's quite difficult sometimes when you're busy to get the greaseproof paper off if it hasn't got anything on it. So we lightly grease, or lightly butter the greaseproof, or the cartouche as it is now. and then we'll turn it over and pop it on top of the sauce until we needed it later make sure you leave a small edge of your cartouche up a bit so you've got something to pick up when you try and remove the cartouche I'll demonstrate in a second so I've just left the corner in the left hand of the pan slightly sticking out as you can see I'm not going to get covered in sauce it makes it nice and easy to remove the grease proof and then no skin forming underneath there that is how you make a bechamel sauce